in the last lecture we were discussing the transport and we um, discussed in detail the passive transport or downhill transport and we discussed how different substances enter through the cell membrane or the plasma membrane into the cell uh, to the intracellular fluid and go outside the cell to the extracellular fluid or the uh, ECF. In the passive transport we discussed that it's like uh, downhill uh, uh, transport and it does uh, not require uh, any energy and then we uh, simply classified it. I'll briefly discuss in uh, those things and then we'll go toward the active transport. So we previously discussed that the passive transport is basically of two types. One is simple diffusion and the other is uh, facilitated diffusions. This passive transport is uh, and this passive and active transport both are present in most of the cells in the human body but some channels, uh, some types uh, are present in some uh, body uh, organs and some uh, channels are present in uh, other areas. For example, some channels are more in the neurons or the nerve cells or the brain or the spinal cord while other types of uh, cells or channels are more pre present more in the uh, skin and the intestine or the kidneys. So what we discussed that the passive transport is of two types. One is a simple diffusion and the other is facilitated diffusion. The simple diffusion is further of two types. It is through the lipid layer or uh, directly through the lipid layer or it's through the uh, protein, uh, channel proteins. Uh, it, the substances which cannot go through the lipid layer, which are not soluble in the lipid, they go directly to the uh, pro uh, proteins. Then proteins were of uh, two types, uh, either they were gated or ungated. The ungated, they, uh, they are open most of the time, but they are uh, specific. They may be uh, sodium specific, potassium specific, magnesium specific, calcium specific, and only one specific substance can go through um, those channels. And then we discussed the gated channels. And then the gated channels had uh, different modes, uh, how their gates open or uh, close. So the gated channel, their, their gates can open through a voltage or action potential. Their gate can open through some ligand and they can open and close through uh, mechanically or through, through some pressure or touch. And then we discuss facilitated diffusion. The, the facilitated diffusion um, was different from the simple uh, diffusion through the proteins by um, facilitating the substance that is moving into or going outside the cell like there is some change in the protein um, or it facilitates the movement of glucose or amino acid into the cell while in the passive um, transport through other proteins uh, there are gates and the gates open and close but they uh, normally do not facilitate the movement now we are coming towards the um, passive uh, the active transport which is the main topic of our discussion today today so the active transport is uh, different from the um, passive transport um, because it requires energy some uh, power is needed for movement of uh, substances into the cell or uh, movement of substances outside the cell and it is uh, an uphill movement because in the active transport substances are moved from a region where they are uh, small in number towards a region where they are larger in number. In passive transport the substances which are uh, more or uh, more in the amount and large in number they are moved simply through the pressure from an, uh, this side toward the site which uh, where they are low in number for example there is a lot of potassium or sodium and it is uh, moving easily because the pressure is high so it moves easily so there no energy is required and no um, atps are required in this process while in the active transport this any substance for example it's it may be sodium or potassium it uh, moves in the opposite direction it moves uphill it is like moving from the ground towards the top of a hill or it is like swimming in a, ri a river in the direction opposite to the water if water is coming from above the hill and you are swimming in that opposite direction then it will be an uphill movement so in the active transport this little or small amount of substance will be moving in the direction of 
larger which will be difficult so energy or ATP will be required. This active transport is basically of two main types. Either it's a primary active transport or it's a secondary active transport. In the primary active transport, there is direct use of energy. And in the secondary um, active transport, there is use of energy, there is in use of power, but it's not directly. Some substance is using power and uh, with the help of that thing, which is most of the time sodium, uh, some other uh, substances like glucose or amino acid, calcium, hydrogen also move. So first of all, we come towards the primary active transport and primary active transport, the, the most common and the ideal example is the sodium potassium pump. The sodium potassium pump is present in most of the cells in the human body and it transports three sodium, three sodium ions outside the cell and it moves two potassium uh, ions into the cell. It is moving sodium into the cell or it is uh, sodium outside the cell or it is moving potassium into the cell. Normally we have discussed in our uh, lectures that potassium is more potassium is more inside the cell. Concentration of potassium is more inside the cell while it's less outside the cell. With the help of sodium potassium pump, the potassium moves in the direction of more potassium where it is more or inside the cell. And similarly, the sodium, the sodium which is more outside, sodium is more outside. And it is less in amount inside. It is also moving in direction opposite to the its concentration so it's an uphill movement and for this process energy is required so how the sodium potassium pump is doing it the sodium potassium pump is having two units alpha unit and alpha unit and beta unit the beta unit function is not known but in the alpha unit there are six points on the three points sodium gets attached three six sides or six points on the three sides sodium gets attached while on the other three sides, two sides are occupied by the potassium and one side is occupied by the ATP. ATP is adenosine triphosphate which we have discussed previously and we will also discuss in detail in future. As soon as the put ATP attached to this side, energy is re released and with the help of energy, the sodium gets out and the sodium goes in. So it here it has been shown. It's uh, this before the energy release of energy the sodium was inside the cell potassium was outside the cell but as soon as energy is released sodium three sodium goes uh, outside the cell three sodium goes outside the cell while two potassium potassium ion goes inside this movement of sodium and potassium it also creates an electric potential it creates more negativity inside the cell and it creates more positivity outside the cell because three positive charges are moving outside the cell and two positive charges are moving inside the cell. So the inside of the cell become more negative as compared to outside the cell. So that's uh, all about the sodium potassium pump. Another example of our primary active transport is the movement of uh, calcium ion. Calcium is directly calcium is directly moved um, into the uh, cell, and it does uh, this movement basically um, does not need any. Uh, this uh, movement basically needs a direct energy. This movement of calcium um, is basically through a channel which only carries the potassium from outside into the inside. And so this type of channel is known as a uniport. If uh, a channel uh, transport only one ion or only one substance, that channel is known as a uniport. And if a channel move two substances at a time, and move both the substances in the same direction then they are known as symports 
and if they are moving in the opposite direction then they are known as antipodes we will discuss it so in the primary transport we discussed sodium potassium atps and uh, movement of calcium into the cell now we come to the secondary active transport in the secondary active transport there is no direct use of energy but there is the the movement of sodium is utilized for the movement of glucose amino acid calcium or hydrogen so there is a pump which normally um, moves the sodium into the cell as soon as um, the sodium gets attached to that pump or that channel glucose also gets a chance and it also gets attached to that pump and in the similar uh, um, in the similar way amino acids which are um, basically um, building blocks of proteins they also gets attached to this uh, different sites and they also move the along with the sodium so the energy of the movement of sodium into the cell is utilized by the glucose and amino acids to move inside the cell this type of channels are basically present in the intestine from where when we take food we eat food the food goes to the intestine from which glucose and amino acids are released and those glucose and amino acids they enter into the cells of intestine through this mechanism the uh, the other example and this is an example of co transport or symport because both the sodium and glucose they are moving in the uh, single or uh, one direction then uh, there is another example uh, another way which is known as counter transport or antiport it also utilizes the energy of the sodium when the sodium goes in the same at the same side calcium or hydrogen ions attach get attached to some sides of that particular transporter or carrier and when the sodium moves in at the same time the calcium and the hydrogen has a chance to go outside the cell so the direction of these uh, movement is opposites that why that's why they are known as counter transport or antiport but because the movement is uh, the the movement of calcium and hydrogen needs energy and the energy is provided by the sodium movement of sodium ion that's why it's also a type of active transport but it's not directly utilizing atp so it's a form of secondary active transport these types of channel which are moving calcium and hydrogen outside in the opposite direction they are mostly present in the uh, in the kidneys where hydrogen is mostly excreted they may also be present in some other human uh, body part just compare this channel with the calcium channel in which it is acting as a uniport it is directly utilizing energy and it is directly moving the calcium into the uh, cell and there is no other um, sodium or uh, potassium or anything so it is a uniport and it is utilizing energy and it's basically a type of primary active transport so we will summarize the active transport active transport is basically of two types it's either active primary active transport or it's sec uh, secondary active transport in the primary active transport there is direct use of atp or energy while in secondary active transport there is no direct use of atp or energy rather the move the energy generated from the movement of sodium is utilized that utilization of energy could be in the same direction or in the opposite direction in the case of glucose and amino acid they move with the sodium in the same direction so they are known as uh, co transport or symports while in the case of calcium and hydrogen they move in the direction opposite to the sodium so they are known as the uh, antiporters or counter transport these different types of channels are present in different uh, parts or different tissues different organs of the human body and their concentration in different organs and different tissues depend upon the function of that organ 
for example in the in the kidneys some types of transporter transporters may be more in concentration than, rather than other in the liver some type of uh, transporter may be more in concentration than other in the intestine similarly in the heart and brain and the nerve tissue so we are not going into detail or, or, and we are not going to discuss this the specific organs at that which type of channels are present where in which uh, type uh, which tissue or which organ but we generally were discussing just the transport the method in the next lecture we will be discussing the different circumstances or different types of conditions which affect the movement of ions so thanks a lot for watching the video